This is Bordeaux, a famous NCAA 14 YouTuber. Get in the end zone! Let's go! Let's go! And today, I'm gonna put him in the game to play his career from high school to college and hopefully to the NFL. Throughout this video, we'll have six challenges we have to complete with him. Bordeaux must become a starter, break a school passing record, win a conference championship, win a national championship, win the Heisman, and get drafted into the NFL. And if we don't complete all six of those challenges, at the end of the video, Bordeaux can tell me anything and I have to tweet it. Standing at a measly 5'7 and 100. 60 pounds. Not many teams were interested in the senior quarterback, but his top list consisted of teams all from his home state of Kentucky. Bordeaux looked to prove the college scouts wrong though and needed to play a fantastic senior season. He was off to a great start in their first game against Florence High School and was even showing off his ability to make plays happen on his feet as well. Despite his size on the field, he was off to a great start so far here in his senior season and he was not going to let the critics mess with his mind at all this year. By the end of the first half, he racked up five passing touchdowns and one rushing touchdown and that strong performance would continue throughout the second half before coach pulled him as Bordeaux would win his first game of his senior season. Bordeaux had had an incredible senior season so far headed into the final regular season game as he had led Louisville High School to a perfect 6-0 record on the year so far and he was looking to make it an undefeated season this year with his team. Putting together this undefeated season had definitely drawn the attention of some college scouts but that wasn't what was on Bordeaux's mind right now. He wanted to go undefeated and take his team on a deep playoff run to win the Kentucky State football championship to cap off his senior season before thinking about where he would sign and after a win in tonight's game for him he would do exactly that and he found himself in the Kentucky State Championship game against Hillview High School and would show that he was one of the best quarterbacks in the nation with his very first play of the game. He could tell that after scoring two times on their first two offensive plays that this was going to be another easy defense for him to pick apart and bring his team a state title and that is exactly what Bordo would end up doing the rest of the night against Hillview as he would end up throwing for eight total touchdowns in the Kentucky State Championship game and he was walking away as a state champion quarterback. Not only that, but he was a five-star ranked quarterback as well with many top teams being interested in signing him. But he would ultimately sign with his favorite school, Kentucky, who offered him the starting spot as a freshman. So that is one of our challenges we can already knock off this list. Bordeaux's first career collegiate game was against rivals Western Kentucky and he could not have had a better start to his career at Kentucky as he would complete his very first pass of his career down the field for a big game and would cap off the drive with his first ever touchdown for Kentucky. Bordeaux and Kentucky would find themselves down by two possessions though with us in five minutes to go in the fourth quarter so he had to step up and try to come back and win this opening game for his team as he would get the offense back into the end zone in under a minute and would tie it up on his feet the next possession. Bordeaux now had a chance to put together a game winning drive in his very first career game with the Wildcats and that is exactly what the star freshman quarterback would do for them as he would win his first first ever collegiate game of his career. Bordeaux would have another big performance in his first ever game in front of the home fans in Kentucky and his team would beat Miami of Ohio by 20 points. Bordeaux was taking on rival school Louisville for the first time in his career and things were not looking great for him and his team as they were down by 12 late in the fourth quarter. His team needed this goal line stop to have a chance but they weren't able to get it as they would end up losing to the rivals for the first time in his career. Headed into conference play, Bordeaux was 10th in the nation in passing yards as a true freshman and he was looking to continue continued climbing that ladder until he was in the number one spot this year in the nation. Florida ultimately proved to be too much though for the Wildcats, as well as number six South Carolina in the number one Crimson Tide. The freshman quarterback was trying to help his team bounce back this week after two losses against Mississippi State in the rain, but yet again they couldn't get the job done. Headed into his final game of the season, Bordeaux and Kentucky were four and seven and needed this win if they wanted any shot at a bowl game. Surprisingly, Bordeaux and Kentucky were off to a good start against number 15 Tennessee and they somehow had a two possession lead over the Volunteers late in the fourth quarter and were looking to make it three. Bordeaux would do just that with this past Corey Sherman and Kentucky would upset number 15 Tennessee to end their season. This was perhaps Bordeaux's best game of the entire year as he would end the year fourth in total passing yards but his team would not end up making a bowl game his freshman season. Bordeaux would have some incoming help though the next season with the 18th ranked recruiting class in the nation and would find himself at a 90 overall headed into his sophomore year. Bordeaux was starting his sophomore season at Kentucky and he was off to a good start against Ohio as he would connect with Corey Sherman for a 23 yard touchdown to go up 10 nothing early on. Bordeaux's dominance would continue throughout the rest of the game and his team could have a great season if he plays this well the rest of the year as he would take home player of the game in their first game of his sophomore season. Bordeaux was now looking to get revenge against the rivals though who beat them last season and he was doing the best he could to keep his team in it the entire game but in the end it would not be enough and Louisville would get the win 
over the Wildcats yet again. A much needed win against Arkansas State would put the Wildcats at 2 and 1 headed into conference play. And Bordeaux would have a great game to lead the Wildcats to a big time victory over Florida in the swamp. He was hoping this level of play could continue next week against South Carolina, but the Gamecocks seemed to have their number the entire day and would not get the victory as they would drop their first SEC game to South Carolina. This was going to be Bordeaux's biggest test yet, and the Crimson Tide proved to be as tough as they looked on paper and would hand Bordeaux his worst career loss yet. Their season still wasn't over though despite that humiliating loss against the Crimson Tide, as a win this week against Vanderbilt would make the Wildcats bowl eligible this season, and Bordeaux would help deliver and make Kentucky bowl eligible. He would also upset number 18 Georgia to lead Kentucky to a final 9-3 record and rank 15th in the nation, which would earn his team a spot in the Capital One Bowl. Bordeaux would look to embarrass the Northwestern defense all day long in his bowl game, and he would do exactly that as he would put up touchdowns through the air and on the ground, and he would win his first ever bowl game as a collegiate quarterback. Bordeaux ended up having a great sophomore season and was looking to have an even better junior one. To start his junior season, Bordeaux and Kentucky were expected to finish second in their division, and he was starting off the year on the Heisman watch list. Number 7 Georgia was going to be a tough test to start this third year with the Wildcats, and both the offense and defense struggled in this opening game of the season, and even though Bordeaux was doing all he could to keep this game respectable, the Bulldogs would blow them out to start their season. This loss would cause Bordeaux to fall out of the Heisman watch, but he would try to get back on it with his performance against number 25 Stanford on the road. Once again though, he was not getting much help at all from his defense throughout the game, and despite him trying his hardest, he would not be able to get the Wildcats back in this game late in the fourth quarter. So Bordeaux would have to win this game against Louisville to avoid a 3-0 start to the season. He has also yet to beat his rivals in his career here at Kentucky so far, but he would finally snap that streak in this game, and would be able to get Kentucky back to 500 with a win this week against UTEP. The defense once again was making this game much harder than it should have been on Bordeaux in the offense, but he would manage to come through and lead his team to a victory. After a slow start to the season, Bordeaux Bordeaux was looking to help his team bounce back in SEC play, and that is exactly what him and his offense would do in their game against the Florida Gators, as they would walk away with a huge victory at home. And that win would bump Kentucky up to number 23 in the country, as they would have another top 25 matchup, and Bordeaux was looking for revenge this game. Kentucky's loss to South Carolina last season was what kept them out of the SEC championship, so he was not going to let his team lose to the Gamecocks again this season. The defense would finally come up clutch when they needed to in this game as well, and Bordeaux would get his revenge against the Cops. His performance would land him back on the Heisman watch list, and that high level of play would have to continue, as his team had another very tough top 25 matchup against the Crimson Tide who killed them last year. It seems that the tables had turned though this year for Bordeaux and Kentucky, as they would get the win over the Crimson Tide at home. But then they would find themselves in a tricky situation against Missouri, as Bordeaux managed to lead the team down the field into field goal range for a last second field goal, and his late game heroics would lead to another Kentucky win. Bordeaux and Kentucky had a big game coming up against Tennessee. They needed to win this game if they wanted any chance at making the SEC championship. It was a close one throughout, but Bordeaux was managing to help his team keep the lead throughout the game, and could be seen making crazy Heisman-like plays like this one, showing off not only his skill, but determination to get his team to win this week. In the end, it would ultimately pay off, and the Wildcats would find themselves at number 3 in the nation, but would unfortunately miss the conference championship, and Bordeaux would also not finish on the Heisman list. His team, however, would be invited to the Fiesta Bowl, and this was Bordeaux's first ever BCS Bowl bowl game. He wanted to show out and put the country on notice in this nationally televised bowl game against number 4 Ohio State, and that is exactly what he would do as he was finding the end zone almost every single possession. He was making throws that you would only think possible from an NFL caliber quarterback all night long, and was even finding the end zone on the ground for a few times as well. This level of play would not only win his team the Fiesta Bowl, but would earn him player of the game honors as well. Bordeaux's historic junior season would see him breaking two school career passing records, which would be another objective we could mark off the challenges list. Bordeaux was starting his senior season at Kentucky, and to open up the year, he had a game against number 7 TCU in Houston. The senior quarterback was showing out and trying to win the Heisman Award this year, and he was off to a good start as he looked fantastic against the Horned Frogs defense, as he would lead Kentucky to a 49-20 victory, but Ole Miss was giving Bordeaux a tough time next week. Despite that, he had a chance to bring his team down on a game-winning drive, but as he was escaping the pocket, would fumble the ball and give it over to the Ole Miss defense. This would end up sending the game to overtime, where Bordeaux would step up in the pocket 
pocket and run through the defense for a touchdown, and then would connect with his wide receiver on the two-point conversion to give Kentucky the very close overtime win against the Rebels. Bordeaux was looking to have a 500 career record against his rivals at Kentucky, and he needed a win against Louisville this week to make that goal a reality, which he would do no problem and would leave the home fans disappointed with another loss to the Wildcats. Number 10 Florida was going to be a bit tougher though, but the rankings didn't seem to matter to Bordeaux as he went straight to work against the Gators, as he and the offense would both literally and figuratively run away with the victory over the number 10 Florida Gators in the swamp, and Bordeaux's great season was still on a roll. Kentucky was ranked number one for the first time as they sat behind South Carolina in the standings. They were down late to the Gamecocks, but Bordeaux was looking to lead a game-winning drive for the Wildcats yet again in his career. He would do just that as he would step up in the pocket and into the end zone for Kentucky, as Bordeaux would yet again beat the Cox. Late game heroics were needed from the senior quarterback the following week as well against unranked Georgia, and Bordeaux would deliver yet another win for his team, as he was still number one in the Heisman race halfway through the season. That could change though if his team wasn't able to beat Marshall this week. Despite it being close, Bordeaux would get his team the lead back late in the fourth quarter to get the win, and somehow Vanderbilt was ranked in the top 25, but they didn't seem to give Bordeaux too many problems, as the offense seemed to be able to score at will against the Commodores defense, and yet again, Bordeaux would lead his team to a top 25 victory. Missouri looked to be the toughest opponent for Bordeaux in Kentucky to close out the last few games of the regular season. If his team could get a win today, they should be able to make it into the SEC championship game, and Bordeaux was doing everything he could to make that a reality, as they would end up beating Missouri on the road, and would be in the snow to close out their season. Tennessee was absolutely no problem for Bordeaux and the Wildcats at Neyland Stadium to close out the year, as they would finish a perfect 11-0, and would find themselves in the SEC championship in a rematch against Ole Miss. Bordeaux did not want this to go to overtime this game, so he got to work right away and would find the end zone on a read option play showing off his wheels. Bordeaux and the offense were scoring with ease all day against the Rebels, and with a late field goal to go up by 10 points in the fourth quarter, the defense would come out and get a stop, and Bordeaux and Kentucky would finally win the SEC. That would be another challenge knocked off our list, and then another one would be Bordeaux winning not only the Heisman, but the Maxwell, Walter Camp, and Davey O'Brien Award as well, as he would find himself in the national championship against Texas. And if Bordeaux could beat them, he would only have one challenge left to complete, and I don't see how he does not get drafted after this season. Remember, we have a forfeit if we're not able to complete all of these challenges with him, so this was a must-win game for Bordeaux, and he was on absolute fire all night long. He would look to lead a game-winning drive against the Longhorns, and would complete the go-ahead touchdown to Mike Whitmore to help secure Kentucky the national championship. So with that objective out of the way, all Bordeaux has to do is get drafted, and somehow he doesn't? I can't believe he didn't get drafted. So since Husky wasn't able to complete all of his challenges with me, I get to choose whatever he tweets out, and this is what I'm going with. Eli Manning has more Super Bowls than Aaron Rodgers, so therefore he's better. Hopefully that hits him deep since he's a Packers fan and he should have been able to complete all of those challenges. 